if y'all know me then y'all know i am super basic my youtube setup is basic the editing of the videos is basic the way that i dress t-shirt and some basketball shorts and some crocs is basic and i could go on and on and on about just how simple of a person i am and my basicness it transfers to my drinks as well i don't need all the fancy pretty stuff just give me the chaser the alcohol and the red cup and i'll be good to go but shaker and spoon they said nah we about to change it up a little bit and what shaker and spoon is is a subscription box to where they say hey you are not just gonna be some basic bartender with us no we're gonna help you fancy it up and pretty it up a little bit they not only send out instructions for you to make different drinks using whatever your favorite type of liquor is they also include every single ingredient that you need in order to get your drink popping so it's time for us to get the mixing baby so shaker and spoon box that we chose is called anejo let's go and what anejo means is aged tequila or rum each box comes with multiple recipes so let's just choose one at random any mini miny mo the beat goes on it calls for two ounces of tequila one half ounce of this spice mojo syrup which i just spilled on my phone and it says three dashes not drops but three dashes of old-fashioned bitters blend so let me try to get this on two I think that was more of a drop than a dash but. And then one to two spritzes of spiced lemon oil And again, all of this stuff was already included in the box All you gotta do is show up and bring your favorite liquor Now it's time for me to fill the glass with ice Use a bar spoon to stir until the mixing glass feels ice cold Test It's getting there Alright, we're good you know what? I actually forgot that we had one of these. So our mixing glass is now ice cold. So now it says to take this and strain it into a rocks glass over a fresh large ice cube. We didn't have the fresh large one, but we decided we wanted to innovate and just add three ice cubes. And the last step says for the aromatic finishing touch, spray the spiced lemon oil over the top of the drink. There we go. And we're gonna call this the Raven Relaxer because after a stressful game from the Ravens, they'll make you need one of these. Oh, oh, that's strong. I feel like I added a little extra tequila, but it's good. So you can go to shakehandspoon.com and choose your favorite box so you can mix it up probably a little better than I did. Use code TKIC uh, for a discount. And you know drinking alcohol is only for people that are 21 years of age and up, and make sure you drink responsibly. So y'all gonna have a, a drink with question from subscribers now? What? Let me know. Anyway, first question came from my guy Elijah. He said, "Hey, Engraven, hope everything is well with you and your family, and hope y'all are having a wonderful summer." I, I remember one of the first questions I sent to you was about John Harbaugh and the coaching carousel, which leads me to my question I heard in one of your question videos that a sub had the Ravens finishing ten and seven. I had us with two more wins, but how do you think Ravens season will fare out? I say um, 17 games, so like 12 and 5. Uh, yeah, probably about 12 and 5. I, I think that's a, a, uh, a record that the Ravens could have. Cause you know how Ravens get down. They um, There's some games where uh, you absolutely think they for sure going to win and they lose them. There's other games where you think, oh, man, they about to lose and they win them. Uh, they do a lot of winning, though. As long as Lamar Jackson is healthy, he's a quarterback – I expect him to continue to do a lot of winning with him uh, under center, but a actually under center too, because actually having a lot of plays under center, because that would be nice. That would open up the play. But, but anyway, um, let's 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 get to the what if game section of this question, because we're gonna do some what if. We're gonna play what if when it comes to the Ravens. Well, let's see what he had to say. He said, if the Ravens finish ten and seven or twelve and five, but don't make the AFC Championship game. Does Harbaugh deserve to get fired? Mm. Will he get fired? No. Will he deserve to get fired? So much will just depend on so much. We can't just say, all right, if Ravens don't make AFC Championship game, Harbaugh's out of here, no matter what. Because so much depends on, well, why didn't he make the AFC Championship game? How did the team lose whatever game eliminated them from making it to the AFC Championship game? Was it the offense? Was it the defense? Were they just consistently unprepared in the playoffs? What was it? 
what was the issue? So much depends on so much. So it's very hard to say. But then this next part, he said, if the Ravens fire John Harbaugh, even though you know that they won't, but he's just talking about what if. Actually, never say never because you never know. But, again, we're we hoping that the Ravens have a lot of success this season. We obviously hope that they win the Super Bowl. So we don't want nobody to get fired because, we anyway, we're still playing a what if game. He said, if the Ravens fire John Harbaugh, should the first phone call be to Sean Payton? Ooh, ooh, yikes. In a good way, yikes, if that were to happen to John Harbaugh. Because with Sean Payton, it's like you – see, my mic wasn't even ready for this question. You just know well, – me. I just know if if we got a Sean Payton, I know this guy, he would get everything out of Lamar Jackson. If we got somebody like Sean Payton, I would not have a lot of the worries and concerns that I currently have right now when it comes to the use of one Lamar Jackson because I know he would just extract everything out of Lamar Jackson skill-wise. Passing, running, everything. And just the, the concepts, the offense, getting a bunch of different guys involved. We watched this guy. We saw what he did with Drew Brees. It's like, okay, somebody could be like, oh, well, yeah, that's Drew Brees. Okay, cool. Look what happened when Teddy Bridgewater got in there. Look what he did with Taysom Hill, even though some of that is like, didn't Taysom Hill, yikes. But <laughs> Jameis Winston here. Give me Jameis Winston for 500. So you see what he's done with all these different players, and then you think about all the different receivers that they, they got these guys involved in different ways. They actually they get their receivers involved in different ways. So many of them. We saw Marcus Colston. We saw Ted Ginn. We saw um oh, is it Marquez Callaway? We see we see Traquan Smith. Um the guy that I'm thinking of, I cannot remember his name right now off the top of my head, and it's driving me crazy. He's, he's from a little ways back, though. But anyway, oh, my God. Yeah, so if, if Harbaugh were to get fired, I would not mind if they gave that guy Sean Payton a call. Uh, he said, I believe if Harbaugh doesn't make a Super Bowl run this year, it should be his last. Ooh, oh, 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 you, you ended it off like that. Whoa. Well, they certainly have had some, some teams. They certainly have had some, some rosters. Um, and, and I think with, with Harbaugh this year, so much is just about smart decision making and holding guys accountable. And this is nothing. No, we said this early this offseason. That's what I'm looking at with John Harbaugh this year. Holding guys accountable. Holding himself accountable, too. But holding guys accountable, especially like coaches and stuff. Um, and, and making smart decisions. I don't feel like thinking about those two-point conversion plays and a lot of them that really shouldn't have been, that didn't need to be. Um, and just really him being willing to step in, even though that's not really him a lot of times, but him being willing to step in. Hey, offensive coordinator slipping, step in. Defensive coordinator slipping, step in. They don't really have me, me having no problems on special teams, but step in. Step in and step up. And real quick, special shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. The two newest patrons being Ed L uh, and Chris R. So I, I appreciate everybody who's a patron. Uh, thank you. Because, again, that's something that y'all ain't got to do, but the fact that y'all do it, appreciate it a lot. Uh, if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash Viz. And if you don't want to, the love ain't going nowhere. I still love y'all. Still. You, you, you know that already. But this next question, it came from a patron. Uh, my guy, a name that y'all are very familiar with, with question from subscribers, MG. He said, hey, what's good, Engraven? So yesterday I was looking at some articles and ran into a Bleacher Report article about predicting the biggest bust on the 2022 season. They listed Devin Duvernay for the Ravens, although the writer made one point that I kind of agree with, which was Ravens might have regrets. I, for one, disagree with the rest of the argument he made. I'll link the article to you below. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, you and the fam stay safe, healthy, and peace. Appreciate it. So, oh, the biggest bust for the 2022 season. Wow, I hadn't heard about this one. Um, 
but they chose Devin Duvernay. Part of Kay's reasoning was about how Duvernay doesn't have big stats to show from a receiving perspective over his first two years in the league. Well, yeah, you play in an offense that's not receiver friendly. It's a run first offense, run heavy offense. They're not very receiver friendly. But anyway, uh, it says with Brown, Hollywood Brown, and Sammy Watkins now gone, Devin Duvernay is poised to step into the wide receiver two role across from Rashad Bateman. I don't know about that, but we'll see. Uh, while Duvernay has proven himself to be an elite return man, evidenced by his Pro Bowl nod in 2021, he only has 53 career receptions for 473 yards and a pair of touchdowns since entering the league in 2020. Oof. Kay also talked about how Baltimore would benefit from having a proven veteran on their roster and that they're likely to regret trusting Duvernay to be their second wide receiver option. Oh, yikes. Ooh, a proven veteran, huh? What do you, what, what do you say? Anyway. Although Duvernay is confident he can thrive with an expanded workload, the Baltimore passing offense will be set back by the lack of battle-tested wideouts on the roster. The Ravens are likely to regret not drafting a replacement for Brown and trusting Duvernay to make a seamless transition to wide receiver two as they look to return to the playoffs following a disappointing 2021 season. Hmm. Um, wow. A lot to unpack there. Um, whew. Lack of battle-tested wideouts. Well, th this will be their battle right here. Proving that they can do this thing. Proving that they can get the job done, especially if the Ravens don't make a move at that position. Um, so they will be, they may not be battle-tested now, but they will be battle-tested moving forward. Um, I'm thinking as of right now, uh, the, the player that I feel like would have the biggest chance to be Ravens the wide receiver too is Tylen Wallace. I think it's Tylen Wallace. If he stays healthy, Tylen Wallace. Um, and it's oh man, with the Ravens, it's just oh, it's, it's so many just unknowns right now. Um, and training camp, of course, gonna start getting some stuff sorted out and whatnot, but whew, we're gonna see how it all shakes out. But Devin Duvernay being a bust, one of the bigger busts for the Ravens in the 2022 season, ooh, uh, I can't really see him being a bust because, in my opinion, a bust is somebody who has super high expectations for them. Devin Duvernay doesn't have that. He doesn't have these super high expectations. Nobody expecting Devin Duvernay. Oh, man, he's going to get like 13, 1,200, 1,300 yards and eight, nine, ten touchdowns and whatnot. And just, I don't think anybody's expecting that. If he got that, that'd be nice. But there, there's not this high level of expectation there. So if he ended up having a disappointing 2022 season, which we hope he doesn't, but if he did end up having a disappointing 2022 season, it would not be considered a bust. Bigger than Roman. Ooh, next question came from my guy, Rodell. He said, good morning, my guy. Straight to it. I'm not sure if the Roman slander been highlighted more than right now, but by wide receivers who signed elsewhere, it continues to grow louder and louder. I completely understand that this truly isn't a wide receiver's dream scheme, and it's more like a wide receiver retirement home. With that said, I still feel it's not 100% Roman's fault. Baltimore can't get its guys at wide receiver. That's true. We've been on that. It, it's, it's, it's much deeper and bigger than uh, Greg Roman. This has been an issue for a long time. But anyway, let's continue. He said, number one, since the Baltimore Ravens came into the existence, it's been known for two things, defense and running the ball. After that, the next best thing was probably kickers and tight ends. The Ravens never, and I mean never, valued wide receiver and always got the crumbles out of the jaw just to get by. This was way before Roman. You clearly see not much has changed in the Ravens' values and principles as they swear by stockpiling draft picks, heavily pursuing on defense and running the ball, and of course, a good kicker and tight end. We all know money talks and the stuff we flush walks. The Ravens double dip and even take triple trips for guys on the defensive side of the ball. They even retain most after their contract expires. If the Ravens truly pursued a wide receiver and not shown interest, I'm sure things would be different. And of course, when I say pursue, I mean with that bag. Not the change price you get what you pay for so being cheap in this area has resulted in cheap play it's the reason the top five wide receivers are making 90 plus million dollars while roman is indeed the lead horseman in the fiasco during the fall of the ravens today could it be at all possible at all possible of other reasons yes lamar is generational beloved a superstar a future hall of famer special different etc could some guys love from afar and just not want to ball with him his best friend was here and left to go elsewhere business is business and will always come first no matter other guys feelings toward lamar they can love from afar we can't assume every wide receiver like or love lamar and will want to play with him even though it would be uh it would kind of be hard to understand why they wouldn't for that part especially with the hollywood part hollywood knows it's a run first offense uh, he he knows that better than anybody he's coming up in contract time 
he's already just been frustrated with the offense, already complained publicly about the offense from years ago, and that continued, and he wanted out. He wanted out. He said to himself, it ain't got nothing to do with Lamar. It's the offense. He said Lamar can run any type of offense he gets put into. Hollywood did not have to say that. He, he didn't have to say that. He was not asked that. But he said that on multiple occasions. It's not Lamar. He said it's the offense. So, and, and the results, you, you see the results for themselves. They, they, they show themselves over the years. Look at it, any of Greg Roman's offenses and just look. You can see it. Um, Hollywood, if, if, if you are a wide receiver, you're seeing all these crazy wide receiver contracts, and you're like, man, oh, my time is coming up. And you have an opportunity to go to a pass-first offense with somebody that you already have rapport with? Oh, yeah, no-brainer. Anyway, uh, he said, all in all, yes, Roman is the headline of the show called We Can't Be Supreme in Your Scheme. Roman is indeed at the top of the depth chart, and we may not see change until he is gone. But even after he leaves, can we guarantee change? No, we can't. Because even before he got there, it was the same thing. Uh, he said, it may be likely guys would be more willing to come with a different OC, but with the Ravens pay? Prices will only continue to go up on superstar talent. Are some guys continuing to monitor Lamar's progression? Even in a pass-heavy Ravens attack, if the Bills and Josh Allen or the Chiefs and Mahomes can offer the same money, would a wide receiver choose Lamar? Gotta ask all these questions. Hmm, that's a good question. And it would just depend. It would depend on what type of opportunity uh, that wide receiver First it would depend on the money Obviously first and foremost That's the biggest thing But then it would depend on The opportunity that That wide receiver would get uh, If that wide receiver Would significantly get Real opportunity in Buffalo Or real opportunity in KC Or real opportunity with the Ravens Next question came from Sterling And let me just commend y'all Because y'all are just Fuck with these questions I love it He said What's up Engraving Quick question I know you've been talking about Baltimore trading for a veteran wide receiver What do you think about us drafting a low Oh okay. Oh, excuse me I, I, I read it wrong What do you think about us trading a low draft pick Like a 5th or 6th round pick for Robbie Anderson Here's a couple of reasons why I think he fits First off Lamar was seen hanging with Robbie Anderson When he didn't come to OTAs Well they both from South Florida They both from Broward County So it was bound to happen But anyway He said secondly I believe Robbie is from Florida too oh, should have read it. So secondly, I believe Robbie is from Florida, too. Lastly, he is the perfect Hollywood replacement for what he does, a speedy wide receiver that can take the top off of defenses. I think he'd be a great number two to Rashad Bateman. Also, Baker just got traded to the Panthers, and Robbie tweeted a couple of months ago that he didn't want Baker on the team. So, to eliminate the drama, just bring him to Baltimore for the low. Thanks, and Raven, to keep up the great work. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I love how Robbie Anderson, we, we know he ain't no fan of Baker Mayfield, and that's okay. I love how he covered it up though, because he was like, "Hey, I, I was just, I was just backing my quarterback. I was just backing Sam Donald, and that was my quarterback at the time, so I was just backing him." Me personally, I, I didn't believe him. I just felt like he just, he wasn't feeling Baker at all, because um, he never said like, "Hey, we got Sam Donald already. We straight." He's just like, "No," but um, anyway, uh, Robbie Anderson, yeah, for for especially for what you said, like a fifth or sixth round pick. Oh yeah, no problem at all. No problem at all. He obviously cool with Lamar, so they will have that that off the field chemistry. And when you got off field chemistry, that can turn to on the field chemistry as well. Would give us a deep threat. You got little drop issues here and there, but he got the speed, and he would be playing on his first winning team. So that can really change your complete mindset. Next question came from my boy Justin C. He said, what's up? How you and the fam doing? We are doing really good. Uh, do you think Patrick Queen will break out this season with him having all the starters back on defense plus the new pieces the Ravens got? Uh, I see Patrick Queen having a huge breakout year with this team. I um, hope you and the fam having a good day. Stay safe. Appreciate it, JC. Um, I could see that. Everything just depends on him being comfortable. Knowing his assignment, knowing what he has to do, and then tackling. He improves on those two things, especially tackling alone, then the sky is the limit. It really is. And I don't just say that just to say it. I don't just say that because I'm a Ravens fan. I, I, I'm saying that because with Patrick Queen, you see, you, you continue to see so many glimpses here and there, like, oh, wow, oh, nice. But then you see uh, the hiccups too. And the hiccups are usually, usually the hiccups with Patrick Queen is just missed tackles. Uh, or just confusion But he's in his third year um, So we're we going to see this year We're really going to see Because this is, this is crunch time 
Next question came from my guy Logan. He said, what are your thoughts on Orlando Brown Jr. and the Chiefs issues that they've been having? He wants top pay and they don't think he's worth it. Thank you for keeping it real. Appreciate it, Logan. I don't even think it's that they don't think he's worth it. Um, they offered him a contract, but it wasn't that top dollar contract. And, and when you are a really good player uh, and the market has already let you know what top money is, you want to achieve that top money and you don't want to settle. So I commend Orlando Brown Jr. for not settling. Right now, apparently, he's um, holding out of training camp and whatnot. He doesn't want to play for them or not even necessarily holding out because he doesn't have a contract. They franchise tag him. I don't think he signed his franchise tag yet, but he's holding out. And um, so we're we going to see what happens with it. But know your worth. Know your worth. And, and I, I respect players that just know their worth and they do not want to settle uh, for less. Next question came from my guy BB. He said, I'm ready to hear something positive about Lamar. Like he has 41 wins and 17 losses. I thought it was like 37 and 12. Wasn't it? Anyway, he's a unanimous MVP, youngest player to win the Heisman, etc. Best offensive player the Ravens have ever had. <clears throat> As a Ravens fan for 26 years, Ravens need to sign him and show Lamar how important he is to this franchise and to this community. Hey, we well, see. And, and for Ravens to sign him, it, it takes two. Lamar would have to want to sign as well. Um, and <clears throat> one of the only things that I think could possibly be holding Lamar back from signing is whatever the Ravens are offering. Or he could really be thinking, uh, even, not even necessarily even deeper than that, but just another thing. He could be thinking of another route. He could be thinking about what they're going to do for him long term. Because he could sign. He can sign right now for a whole lot of money. Um, but he could be thinking even beyond just the money. He could be thinking about legacy. How are these Baltimore Ravens going to set me up for success? How are these Baltimore Ravens going to help me out so I can really be the best Lamar Jackson I can be? What kind of weapons are they going to provide for me? Uh, are they really going to go all in? Are they really going to try, really try to win? Are they going to really try to take this thing to the next level? Hey, I'm working on me. I'm trying to be the best that I can possibly be. But how's the coaching staff going to be? Who's the personnel going to be? What kind of plays are we going to be running? How's our scheme going to be? He could be thinking about all of that, too. Next question came from my boy, Flirt Nowinski. He said, yo, what's good, bro? Hope all is well with you and yours. Quick question. Uh, could Lamar Jackson be a prisoner of his own success? Uh, you said Allen was questioned, then they got Diggs, he skyrocketed. Kyler was questioned, they got D-Hop and more, and he skyrocketed. Lamar won MVP with a hurt rookie, Seth Roberts. LOL, no knock to Seth and Snead and a hurt Hollywood, but yeah, you get what I'm saying. You think his ability to do a lot more with less is hurting him. Look at Kyler, he has had everything and he has done nothing, honestly, but when you look at Lamar, he's doing it all. Mm, that is... um. That's a great question. And yeah, I, I, I think that that right there, um, they look at that like, all right, so we we could upgrade in little areas here and there, like the offensive line. And they have a lot of Ravens fans thinking that too. Oh, we upgrade the offensive line. That's, that's all we need to do. We straight. We saw what Lamar did with back in 2019 with that. We saw what he did in 2020 with that. So all we need is offensive line. He'll be straight. He can do the same thing. We ain't got to upgrade receivers like that. We got Mark Andrews, one of the best tight ends in the league. That should be enough. But, yeah. So, yeah, I, I do. And I, I think with, um, yeah, man, you you just look around the league, man, and, and you see what's going on. Man, that's a sad story. Uh, anyway, he said, I understand, also understand that Lamar hate is real, but it's not even about Lamar. Have you, ever, have you ever thought it's because of the overall team being overachievers? I know it sounds crazy, but we can go down a list of almost every player on the roster, especially the strongest parts. Uh, one is a quarterback that can't play quarterback, but he ends up being a top five QB in the league. One undrafted running back, then another running back that they took too high. <laughs> Best backfield in the NFL. I, I don't know about the best. They are a really good one. I don't know about the best. Uh, but anyway, he said a third round placeholder at tight end. Now he's a top three, if not the type, top, <laughs> top tight end in the league. Speaking about Mark Andrews. A left tackle that was considered an injury prone bust. You know, I have never been a big fan, but he's not what they say he is. He just needs to be healthy. 
Now, who's that about? Left tackle that was considered an injury-prone bust. Uh, that that's not Ronnie Stanley. Who, who, I don't know who you're talking about, because it's not Orlando Brown Jr. I, I, oh, maybe I, I guess you're talking about Orlando. I mean Ronnie Stanley because he said he just needs to stay healthy. So, oh, okay, I think I, okay, I get what you're saying. So you're saying that Ronnie Stanley w was considered a bust, and the when the Ravens picked him, it's considered injury prone. Well, that ended up being true about the injury prone part. Um. But anyway, he said an outside linebacker that had zero sacks his last year in college. Um, but then his stats are right behind the player that won defensive rookie of the year with multiple sacks. So he's talking about, I was about to say a job, but he's talking about a Dafe away. Um, a, one, a cornerback that doesn't tackle at all, gambles too much, high risk, low reward. Surprisingly, one of our better tacklers. Uh, <laughs> he took out Derrick Henry on his back pockets. Also, it's been the high reward, low risk with gambling. So he's talking about Marcus Peters. Um, and then he said, Lamar does play a part because everybody is mad that they were wrong about him, but they were wrong about his whole team. And I think it just kills them. And they direct it all to the QB, formerly known as eight, but soon to be one. Oh, I, I really do hope he changes his number to one. That would make that would make us so happy. We would love that. And he said, also, I have a hot take. Uh-oh, let's see. Uh, the Ravens will go into the year with the worst wide receiver room, but come week 10, they will be considered top five. Yeah, you got to take. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to take. You got to take, all right. Yeah, this, yeah, this, uh, yeah. That'd be nice. I hope you're right. But let's see what you're talking about. Uh, because when it comes down to it, every season he proves everybody wrong and they move the goalposts. Well, they're starting to run out of space. So at this point, they're going to say he has too much help and try to down him because, well, that's what they do. Bateman and them got that dog in him and it's going to show. All right, hey, I hope you're right. I know because I know they got heart. I know that they obviously got that for sure. But now I got to show up on the field. That skill got to show up on the field. So we're going to see. We're going to see. And he said, last but not least, I really feel like we have a new Lamar on our team. Very skilled, high potential, very unorthodox. And no, I'm not talking about Snoop. Daniel Falele. He's raw, but man, once he get his legs up under him, it's a wrap. Do you think that he will be a starter come midseason? Mm. I hope not. Now, the reason I say that is because that would mean that our offensive line is healthy and everybody's doing a great job. That's the only reason why I would hope not. Now, if Daniel Falele is better than somebody who's a starter, then, hey, yes, I would love him to be out there. But I would love if the guys that we got right now are doing a great job and they all keep their jobs. Uh, he said, and like the sports analysts will be once Lamar Jackson changes his number to one in a few months, I'm out. Appreciate you. Yeah, this feels like a dream.